Hello everybody, welcome to Jeff's Baking Blog. Today I'm going to make a cheese and potato pie or tart. This is going to have a pastry base and a lattice work pastry on the top and inside is going to be a potato with a combination of cheeses. The pastry would also have cheese in as well. Uh, it's going to take a little bit of time because we have to chill the pastry and we have to bake for about 40 to 50 minutes. 45 minutes something like that but it's quite easy so I'll go on to the ingredients and for the pastry I have 307, uh, 370 grams which is about two and a half cups of cake and pastry flour um, it could be up to two and three quarter cups now you could use plain flour and it would be two and a half cups of plain flour at that weight then I have uh, 150 grams which is one stick plus two and a half tablespoons of butter, which is at room temperature. Mine's actually got very soft now, but it should be okay. I have two medium eggs, which would be large in the USA. I have a pinch of salt, and I have 100 grams of Grana Padano cheese, which I have grated. That's three and a half ounces. It looks to me like there's a good cup full there. So that's for the pastry. And then for the filling, I have 400 grams, which is 14 ounces, of potatoes, which I have um, boiled in their skins, and I've peeled the skins off, and they're just cooling down a little bit now. So that's uh, the potatoes. I have salt to taste, so it depends on how much salt you want. And then I have another 20 grams of Grana Padano cheese. That's going to go into the potato. And then to be put on top of that once it's in the tart is uh, some soft cheese. I'm actually using Borsin and I have about 150 grams of that and I'm also going to cube some uh, mozzarella and sprinkle that on the top as well and I'd probably use about 50 grams of that. That's just to give an extra little bit of um, flavour and texture to, uh, to the whole pie. So we'll go on to make the pastry and it's a little bit messy. First thing I'm going to do is to put my salt in with my eggs and I'm going to put the finely grated Grana Padano cheese into a bowl and into that I'm going to add my butter. As you can see, my butter is now very soft indeed. That's because it's very hot in here today. Not helped by boiling potatoes for such a long time. So with, with that in the bowl, I'm going, simply going to squeeze that together in my hand to get the butter and the cheese all mixed together. And then I'm going to pour the egg and the salt in as well. And I'm going to mix that around until that's all combined. And as you can see, that looks like it curdles, but it, it will be perfectly fine once the flour hits it. So then I'm going to put my flour in and continue to mix it around until it starts coming together. And 
that's coming together very easily as you can see so I'm going to put that onto the counter and I'm going to squeeze that into a nice ball of dough So I'm just going to use my hands to squeeze it until it all comes together. So it's really quite minimal the amount of kneading I have to do. But I want to form that into a disc. And as you can see that's come together quite nicely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that into some plastic wrap. like that and I'm going to chill that in the fridge so I'm going to put that in the fridge and allow it to chill for about 30 minutes so that we can then roll it out for the base and the lattice that we need for our uh, cheese and potato pie or tart so I'll go on to uh, mix the potato. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to roughly, with a fork, roughly mash the potato. And I don't want this mashed finely as you might have if you're doing sort of creamed mashed potato or something. And then I'm going to sprinkle over the salt to taste. And then I'm going to put in the 20 grams of Grana Padano cheese again grated. And I'm going to work that into the mashed potato and that's all there is to that we just have to leave that then for ready to fill our pastry once we've rolled it out so I'll set that to one side and I will be back when the paste is ready to go on to the next step the dough has been chilling now for uh, about 30 minutes and I have my oven preheating at 200 celsius that's 180 celsius with a fan 400 fahrenheit I've taken the dough out and put it onto a lightly floured surface and I've just cut a, a little piece off because I won't need all of this for the base and there would be some excess here but I'll, I'll just set that to one side because that will be part of our um, strips for the top so what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll this out to a thickness of about five millimeters and I want it to be able to completely cover the base of this 23 centimeter nine inch flan tin and come up the sides and go over the top a little bit so probably more like um, 30 centimetres I'll have to roll this out to which is 12 inches in diameter and that should be good enough I think so I'll c carefully try to lift that up onto the rolling pin like 
like that and drop it into the tart tin. And then push that down into the tin. Just like that. And I want to keep this overlap. So I press that down as well. And I'm going to cut off just around the, the edge, the excess. Like that. Gather that up. And that needs to go with the remainder of our flour. So then I'm going to take a fork so then I'm going to take a fork and I'm going to prick the base Like that and I'm going to take my potato mixture which is now cooled down and I'm going to put that directly onto the pastry base and spread that around Just like that and then I'm going to take my borsan and I'm just going to pull off little chunks and put it onto the top of the potato. Like that. And I'm actually going to, I've just got a little bit of mozzarella, which I'm going to drop on as well. You don't have to use this though, there's enough borsan there to give this a good flavour, but I'm doing that. So that's good. And what I've also got, which I didn't mention earlier, is I've chopped some fresh parsley, um, and I'm just going to sprinkle a bit of that over the top as well. I've probably got two teaspoons, and it's very roughly chopped. So that's enough of that. So 
So I'll set that to one side and we need to roll out the remaining pastry and cut some strips. I'm going to cut the strips about three quarters of a centimetre probably, maybe half an inch. So then I'm going to take the strips and lay them over the pastry to over the, over the pie and I'm going to press it into the edge and with the pastry strips formed into a rough lattice, it's not perfect, I'm going to turn that overlap that I, I left over like that just to form a nice rim And that is then ready to go into the oven. And I'm going to put that into the oven and I'm going to bake it for 45 minutes. Then I'll take it out of the oven and uh, I'll come back and show you the results. Well, I baked the potato, cheese and potato pie for 45 minutes and I took it out of the oven and I've actually let it cool down probably for about 20 minutes. I've taken it out of uh, the tart tin and I've cut a slice so this is what it looks like and <clears throat> I've checked the the bottom of the pastry um, which is nicely baked and I actually stood this I when I preheated my oven I actually um, put a baking tray in so that that would get hot so that as soon as I stood the tart tin on it, the heat would get into that tart tin and help the pastry cook from underneath. Um, so I'll have a taste of it. It tastes very good. Um, it's got the, the cheesy flavour in with the, the potato and on top of the potato. Mm. And I'm getting the cheese. I'm just going to have a taste of the pastry almost by itself.
yes that does taste very good so I'm, I'm enjoying this it's the sort of thing that um, will keep in the fridge for two or three days if it's in a, a airtight container it can be frozen as well or sliced and frozen ideal eaten warm but I think that during the summer I would quite happily eat this cold with a salad or something <clears throat> now I should say that although I used Gran Grana Padano and Borsan you could use mozzarella or uh, not mozzarella you could use uh, parmesan or pecorino instead of the Grana Padano and you could use things like uh, Stilton or <clears throat> <clears throat> and you could use things like Stilton or even cheddar or gorgonzola instead of the borsan any cheese you want really um, a soft cheese is better because it will melt onto the potato during cooking so that's going to be it for this video but I ought to mention that on this video and on um, the previous videos the last 10 so far I think I have introduced what I'm calling chapters or time codes so in the description below the video you will see uh, times with chapter headings which you can click on and it will take you direct to those that that part of the video so if, for instance if you'd watched the video and uh, you couldn't remember whether you'd heard what the uh, oven temperature should be you can click on preheat oven or oven temperature and it would take you directly to where I'm telling you what that temperature should be. Also on YouTube <coughs> at the bottom of the video there's what they call the scrubber line where you can actually hover your cursor or your finger, press your finger on your phone and drag the line across and it takes you to a different part of the video. On that line there will appear little black lines which is showing where the, each of the chapters start. So I'm doing that, I've done that on 10 videos, I'll do it on this one and gradually I will work back and do it on the other videos as well. So that's going to be it for today. I hope you've enjoyed the video and if you have, please give me the thumbs up below the video and click to subscribe to my YouTube channel. In the top right hand corner of the screen, there will be an eye that you can click on and that will take you to a link for this recipe and I'll also put a link below the video and I'll be back with another recipe in the very near future. So until then, happy baking.